Well, a very good evening to you. Welcome to Virtual Church. I'm your host tonight. I'm Richard McVeigh. Most of you might know that. And it feels very strange looking all the way over here into this camera rather than up there. But I've got a feeling that I left my little tripod in Oxford. So I've had to move the camera. I hope that's okay. I hope that doesn't put you off. I hope that, that doesn't, you know, upset the balance because I know you guys like a routine. I like a routine. When you change something so fundamental as the camera angle, it makes it feel like a whole new thing. <laughs> that was Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Of course it was. One of the great uh, hymns for Palm Sunday, of course. So tonight, I hope you don't mind, will be all live requests simply because this week has been, well, the last two weeks really, have been a bit of a busy time. Weird. Um, yeah, a bit of a busy time. And tonight is going to be quite short. We're going to have maybe play for an hour. So live requests only tonight. I can see that I've had a few already. I can, I'm, going to, I'm going to go straight into a live request that's coming from Thomas Maranta. All glory, Lord and honour. Great hymn. Um, and so if you want to make a live request, please just put a couple of quid or a few dollars or whatever it is into the chat. And my wonderful producers, Josh and James, will capture that and we'll make sure that we play it tonight. Right, let's go on then. So Thomas has asked for um, All Glory, Lord and Honour. A great, another great hymn for Palm Sunday. And this is a great processional hymn. I played this uh, last night in a performance of the um, St. John Passion oh. of Bach. What a wonderful piece that was. I was on Continuo. And that's a very, very involved... Um, instrument uh, instrumentation to play the continuo for the passions is busy 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 so thomas maranta asked for all glory lord and honor i won't have all of the verses because we will be here until next tuesday if we have all eight verses and the refrain which basically makes it 16 verses so we'll have we'll have maybe four verses and the refrain which is essentially eight verses right so here we go uh, let's enjoy the show tonight and let's crack on. You get a, a different perspective of the organ from, from there, don't you? And, and of my side profile. <laughs> Here we go.
Sorry about that random pedal note there my, with my right foot. Not quite sure what, what my right foot was doing there. It went straight towards some very incorrect notes. My right foot has got a mind of its own. Hmm. Right, let's have a go then. So, Thomas, thank you for your request. I thank you for making it appropriate for Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday requests, I think, will be favoured tonight if, we, if there are too many. Um, palm palm uh, Sunday hymns. There are not, I suppose there aren't that many, actually. Like, specifically Palm Sunday for procession. I'm very interested to see what you can come up with, actually. If you can request some specifically Palm Sunday hymns that might, people might not have thought of. It's quite easy to sing Lenten and Passion Tide hymns. My song is Love Unknown, for example. But have you got any ideas up your sleeve with regards to, it's definitely a Palm Sunday hymn, but it's sort of thinking outside the box? Let me know. Let us know, see what you can come up with. So let's go into our next request now, which has come in from John, I think. John 723. <laughs> 723. Is that, is that your, local, your local bus number or something? <laughs> um, these avatars, you know, um, screen names, you can have anything you like, can't you? And it's, you can hide behind it and you can put, you can, you can be whoever you want to be online. Where's my desk hand? There's a desk hand to this somewhere. I think it's in uh, this hymn book here. I think it's in here. No, it's not. Uh, what am I thinking? It's not, no, I'm thinking of another hymn. So lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. For John, let me just see. Yeah, it is. It's John 7, 2, 3. Ah. J.T. Uh, Basner, or Basner, says John, uh, uh, chapter 7, verse 23. <laughs> uh, J.T. came up with a very good solution something from the Bible, but actually it's the rotation from his, from his motorbike. Excellent. I like that. That is, that's tickled me. I, I, you, a lot, some of you know that I like mo, motor, all things automotive. And that's, that's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> right. Come on. Let's lift high the cross for John and his uh, Lambretta.
Andrew, we are in Salisbury. Yeah, that's a screenshot, a picture of the choir area with the organ on both sides. It's a really fabulous building, actually. Um, those people who haven't yet been to Salisbury and, and you Americans, it is pronounced Salisbury. Souls, souls, bury, Salisbury. Uh, it doesn't look like it, does it? But it, it is, take my word for it. Um, it's a wonderful place, a wonderful city, quite a small city, um, with wonderful walks. If you're into walking and hiking, uh, Wiltshire, which is the county, uh, our equivalent of your state, I suppose. There's some wonderful walks around there. Uh, so get yourself over to Wiltshire and Hampshire, next door to Hampshire, which is where I am. And there is a wonderful organ. This, this, is a, this is a Father Willis organ, and it's um, one of our finest. Okay, so thank you very much, John and his Lambretta. <laughs> I haven't got any uh, motorbike sound effects on here, unfortunately. Um, but actually, very excitingly, I have managed to get a, a rear car seat um, for Hugo in, in my car, which is very, very exciting. So there we are. That was taken today. Um, you can see that. I can't quite see it, can you? Is that not in focus? I can't focus it. But there he is, sat in the rear there. I'm very excited. Well, of course, we've had uh, car seats in our other cars, but that's Daddy's car. And it's um, we've been waiting a long time for him to get, get... I've been waiting for him, waiting a long time for him to get into that car so we can go to nursery together, to go, fo to go, go to football uh, together. So I'm very excited. And when we um, showed him the car seat in the car, he's a big smile, you know, because he loves that car and he can now go in it. So, yay. <laughs> um, it's, it's the small things, isn't it? You know, you, that, you, you do something with your son or your daughter that you, you yourself love so much. It's like you're sharing that passion. It's, it's just a wonderful, I find a, a wonderful bonding opportunity. Anyway, let's not talk about bonding too much. Let's go into a request which is actually coming from our producer tonight. Uh, one of our producers, I mean our producer in chief tonight is Josh, but um, um, uh, James, uh, it's Josh and James, um, which is not, not confusing at all, <laughs> uh, has requested uh, Onward Christian Soldiers. Now this hymn, as you will have noticed from my marathon the other month, did not make it into the successor of this, which I think is a bit of a shame. Because I love this hymn. I used to do it a lot as a chorister, but it's now it's not in the new hymn book. It may well be going out of fashion. Having said that, I, don't, I haven't played it a lot recently. Hmm. Okay, let's have a go. Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master leads against, leads against the foe, forward into battle, see his banners go. This is a, exactly the, the right sort of thing for Palm Sunday, isn't it? It's a procession, you know, basically going into, well, going, going to war. I think that's a metaphor. Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. Maybe someone, as I'm playing this, perhaps someone could, um, someone more learned than me could actually give the meaning behind this text. That would be interesting for us all to, uh, to see. Thank you very much, uh, James, for all of your help and for requesting this, my, one of my favourite childhood hymns. Where, where should we go? Uh, go here.
It is a great hymn. And uh, I will look forward to being able to read back through your um, comments about what you think the text is about. Andrew Liu says, it is a metaphor probably rooted in the command to put on the whole armour of God in the fight against the devil and his schemes. Interesting you actually, you guys are coming up with some, um, some meanings behind the uh, text. I think it's all subjective as well, isn't it? Um, it's all down to personal, you know, what, what you take, what you personally take away from the hymn. That's a great thing about poetry and language. You can, different people take away different things from it. Because if you think about, I find that if a text is so, I'm, I'm afraid I find modern language very unpoetic. Modern, like, modern translations of hymns I find very unpoetic and very, not, which doesn't allow um, you to think about the text. It's not very, it's not very thought provoking. Whereas if the language is like, you know, King James Bible, where you have to really think about what on earth is being said, or Shakespeare, you know, let's take it to the levels of Shakespeare. Well, the language is so difficult to like, almost read like aloud because it's just all over the place. It doesn't flow as you'd expect it to flow in terms of modern day language. But if you think about what, if you actually stop to think about the, the text, you think about it and you think, oh, that's what it means. And then you sort of take things away from that. Whereas if it's just so blunt, just, just everything is very descriptive and there's no poetic language. You just sort of read it and think, yeah, fine, that's what it means. And then 10 minutes later, you've, you've actually forgotten it. Thank you very much everyone for your donations tonight. Thank you, Katrina, for your $50, that's very kind. Um, it really is appreciated. And I'm really sorry that tonight is only live requests. Um, I, I just, I've had such a busy week. And it was made up of getting the Oxford recording out for you guys uh, last night. So I recorded it on Monday, so six days ago. And in the court, and it was online on Friday as a premiere. So I had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and a bit of Friday to put together something which would take normally take weeks to do and I also included an organ demonstration so an, an organ demonstration and the organ recital put out in the space of a few days and it was it was hard it was tough but it has meant that a lot of other things have been pushed to the side unfortunately including the pre preparation for bc uh, answering emails so if you've emailed me or you know sent me a message somewhere and i haven't replied that's that's why I've been editing. So I'm really sorry. I hope to catch up this coming week. I'm going to have a bit of a, an easier week this week to catch up with life. And it also has meant that I haven't actually yet got this on the website. Let's talk about that in a moment. Right, so let's go into our next hymn, which I think has come in from Daniel uh, Kubaki. Uh, and I believe it's in my email. There it is. So it's um, my saviour first of all is its title, but the words are entirely different. The words are, when my life work is ended and I cross the swelling tide, when the bright and glorious morning I shall see, I shall know my redeemer when I reach to the side and his smile will be the first to welcome me. I shall know him, and redeemed by his side I shall stand. I shall know him by the print of the nails in his hand. Thank you very much, Daniel, for sponsoring this particular hymn. Let's have a go with it.
Thank you very much, Daniel. Words by Fanny Crosby. We've had a lot of Fanny Crosby hymns over the past few weeks. We ought to do a Fanny Crosby hymn marathon. I'm sure there'll be a lot it's, um, of hymns by her. We're doing, um, it's, it's, it's Isaac Watts year this year, isn't it? He's celebrating a birthday. I think it's a birthday. So we ought to um, do something with that. So before we go into our next request, which comes in from Josh, one of our esteemed producers, he is the producer in chief tonight. He's in the hot seat. And he's asked for, oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous hymn. Actually, Josh, I'm going to play it from the NAH, actually, because there's a nice harmonization in here. Um, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Wonderful hymn. It's quite a very powerful hymn as well. So before I play that, so that if anyone interested in this book, it's coming to a BIS shop near you very, very soon, maybe within a few hours. To say that I'm proud of it would genuinely be um, an understatement. So obviously this is the second book that BIS has done. The Call of the Composers, there isn't one to hand, but The Call of the Composers was basically a compilation of pieces that members of the BIS community had composed. So they sent them to me. Um, only, only, I think, a couple of pieces in the book were written for BIS. But there was, they were, it was a compilation of hymns from you know, years ago and just brought together into a single book. This, however, all of the pieces in here were written for BIS uh, for the uh, composition competition last year. Um, the winner, or well, the top three um, winners, the third, um, third place, second place, and first place are obviously all in here. Uh, first place was by uh, Tim Rivald, Timothy Rivald, um, who is the organist at Chichester Cathedral, which is where this picture was taken when I was um, when I was down there. And the Veni Creato, which is a, a beautiful sort of name anyway, a title for a, for a book, I think. Um, that's the that's the title of his winning piece. So I thought it was rather appropriate to use a picture of the Chichester Cathedral organ where. Timothy is the organist, and the title of his piece, Veni Creator. There are 19 pieces in here, all listed there, um, including a wonderful piece by Christopher Churcher, which I didn't actually have anything to do with the, the final shortlist. I, had, I did the long list with Tom Bell, but the, um, the, the judges, Martin Baker, Colin Walsh, Francesca Massey, and Tom Bell himself, uh, actually narrowed the pieces down into the top three. Um, I was quite um, surprised, actually, um, that the piece by Christopher Churcher uh, didn't make the top three, because it is it's very it's very original. Um, it could be almost like Eric Whitaker, uh, but for the organ. I think it's a wonderful piece and it's a really good recital opener. And I, I know Tom. Uh, plays it quite regularly for his recitals, and I've actually played it in uh, a couple of my recitals as well. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's stuff in here for everyone. There's, there's, there's tricky music, but there is also very easy music which you could sight read. Um, there's a wonderful piece by um, Adam uh, Adam Heron it's called uh, Fantasy in E Minor, which is it wouldn't take long to learn that at all. Um, but it's the perfect sort of piece to play perhaps before a service. Big crescendo towards the end on the final page where you have F, 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 and then it dies right back down. I've played it actually here. Um, and in fact, I'll play that later on because um, it's a really nice Lenten piece. There's a, a few Takatas in here. There's a fab piece by uh, Daniel Soper, which wasn't featured on Tom's um, recital. It's called And Round. Basically goes it basically goes in a big sort of circle. Uh, it's very clever. The, the tune keeps coming back through various keys. Um, it's very well put together. I think this, the quality of this is just 
far better than I could have hoped for, to be honest. So, it's, this is my my baby. There's a great little skirt setto here by David Hall. Not to be confused by confused by David Hall's the organist of Salisbury Cathedral. David Hall, singular, um, is the head of music at Twyford School in Hampshire, and he's a say he's a good teacher would be an understatement. He's He's seriously good at, at teaching uh, and inspiring young kids. This piece I would say is maybe grade five or grade six at the most. I would say grade five actually. Um, it's a beautiful little ditty. Three pages, one, two, three, um, and is over in about two minutes, three minutes, two minutes tops. Um, you know, things like that is, are very easy. And then there's a, a big passacaglia at the end, which again wasn't featured in Tom's recital last summer called an eclectic passacaglia uh, which looks I think it could be um, it could be Rega is inspired by Rega bit of Bach here this, this figuration here is definitely the Bach passacaglia um, chromatic pedal notes there and it ends on full organ and so it's that's a really fabulous piece we've not heard that one yet so it'll be on, on this shop I hope tomorrow um, it is only available as a hard copy. Um, I think releasing it as a PDF at this stage um, is not going to happen, but that's not to say it won't happen in the future. For now, until we've shifted some of these boxes. I've got 200 of these to shift. I've got them, they're, they're everywhere. Um, yeah, we'll shift those first and then we'll consider doing the PDF. So look out for that. I'll put it on my social channel, so Instagram uh, and Facebook and, and on YouTube as well. Let's have, a go, let's have a go now with uh, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord, uh, as requested by Josh Wilson. Thank you very much, Josh, for all of your work, and of course, thank you for your $10 as well. Okay, let's have a go.
were you there when he rose from out the tomb? We, we did that hymn. Uh, um, the reason I didn't do a, a BC last week was because I was doing quite a large service in Romsey Abbey with my choir. And we, we, uh, we, sung, we sang that hymn um, at the very end in procession. And we, we actually omitted the final verse because the service was a, um, a reflection on the passion of, of Jesus. And we just thought that um, looking forwards to the resurrection, which we all know as part of the story, but looking forwards to the, the resurrection and celebrating the resurrection in a service, I, I suppose, that was dedicated to the trial um, and then the crucifixion before we've actually gone through Holy Week anyway, it was, was a little bit presumptuous. So we didn't, we didn't sing the last verse, we actually ended it really quietly, um, omitting the final verse. But a, a really powerful hymn, I think. I hope you agree. Oh, Janet Taylor, I gather, was actually the person who requested that hymn. So why did I think it was Josh. Oh yes, Josh. It's because your name was right above it. Text. My fault. Janet Taylor, who sent through nine pounds and ninety-nine p. Thank you very much, Janet. I apologise for thinking it was our producer in chief tonight. It was Janet. I do really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Eileen, I'm pretty sure you requested this next one though. It is, um, O Sacred Head Sore Wounded, the great hymn, uh, not only from the St. Matthew Passion, um, but, that, uh, but now the, the great hymn, if you like, for uh, Passion Tide. O Sacred Head Sore Wounded, as harmonised by J.S. Bach. I give you three verses of this because there are actually there are five here but what I'll do is I'll I'll give you both versions of the chorale both harmonizations there are there are at least two there's quite a few more I think but I'll give you two versions of the chorale two harmonizations of the chorale should I say both by JSB second of which um, comes from the St Matthew Passion um, so that is in this St. Matthew Passion, this chorale is the big chorale in, in that passion. Okay, let's have a go. It's beautiful, beautiful this. O sacred head so wounded, defiled and put to scorn. O kingly head surrounded with mocking crown of thorn.
Ooh, goosebumps. <clears throat> Just those, those harmonies are so... No one else could have written those harmonies. The way he just has those chromatic uh, descending intervals. And then at the very, very end. Um, da, 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 da. B, B flat in the bass. And then. Okay, thank you very much, Eileen, for um, allowing me to play that. I played quite a few chorales last night. Um, so as the uh, Christchurch Cathedral recital was being broadcast, I was broadcasting a live concert in the flesh. I was playing the continuer part for the St. John Passion last night in Romsey Abbey, and it was wonderful. So wonderful. Sang it, the choir sang so well. Uh, and the um, uh, the evangelist uh, Christopher Bowen sang oh just fabulously, and the orchestra was the Monteverdi players, who are the orchestra who normally play with the Monteverdi choir. So they were pretty good, and they were pretty good with in baroque bowing and period instruments. The violin had five strings for a start. It was amazing to see. Um, yeah, the, 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 the viol de gambe and that really wonderful chorale just as uh, Jesus has died. Oh, that was a, that was a, that was a moment. That was, that was a special moment. Okay, let's go on to our next hymn request. Where should we go? Amazing Grace. That's coming from Neil. And, and Neil, I gather that this is your very first super chat so I should congratulate you and uh, and thank you for for doing that um thank you for doing your first super chat here on BIS really kind so amazing grace in common praise number 345 let's have a look oh sorry 375 my 375 With this. This is uh, an arrangement by Robert Gower. There's so many different arrangements of this, aren't there? Let's see what this one's like. Thank you very much, Neil, for requesting this.
Well, that was um, a bit of a combination of Robert Gower's harmonies and just other random harmonies thrown in there. Hadn't come across that version before, actually. An interesting version. It's also interesting how the tune is, is different in, in different arrangements as well. There's no definitive version of the actual tune. Um, like, that's fairly standard. And then here. That's often done differently. But there we go. Thank you very much, Neil, for requesting that. Um, thank you for your requests. They're coming in nicely. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. It, it really is helpful because it just has saved me. Um, I haven't had time, literally haven't had time to um, go through the pre-requests and get them all sorted because it's been such a busy week. And today was Palm Sunday, so we had Palm Sunday service this morning, obviously, even song tonight. And then what he didn't actually know it when I when I what you might not realize when I go away to do a recording all of the cameras that I use are the cameras in here so uh, everything that I you know I'm using now this one I'm, I'm talking into the ones behind me this overhead camera here it's on a quite a long arm which you know comes out and and, and sits down here um, it all has to go with me on the record onto location and then obviously when I come back I have to set it all up and it's taken me two hours at least to get this, this room set up today so oh my goodness it's been it's been quite the week have I got bags under my eyes if I haven't then I'd be amazed if I haven't then I know you're just flattering me so I have got bags under my eyes anyway whoa what was that bouncing one look at that bouncing out go and go back in Bow! That was a bouncer, wasn't it? What's all this? All this pinging going on. Oh, John. John has donated five uh, channel memberships. It's very kind. Thank you very much, John. So we've got five new channel members. Yay. It's always good to see new channel members. That's up to you guys if you've just become a channel member, courtesy of someone like, you know, our good friend uh, John with his Lambretta. <laughs> uh, it's up to you then now to maintain that after it's expired because you get a a month for free and then at the end of the month it's up to you whether you want to um, roll it on or not please do it really does help let's go into one of the great hymns for passion tide oh we've got a tail on the screen it's bobby um my song is love unknown for vince evans uh in 100 and, well and it's on my ipad actually i know it's here then crucify is all their breath we had this this morning at Romsey. I won't do all the verses because there are quite a few of them. As beautiful as it is, actually. Uh, but we'll only have some of the verses. Come on, then. I can't play with you there, can I? Where have you come from? I thought I'd close those doors. Come on. Come on. You stay there. There we go. Question for you all. Have you been to a Palm Sunday service today? Let me know in the chat. I can see the chat up there, so I'll be looking up.
and crucifies all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry. It's quite a quite a powerful verse, that isn't it? Sometimes they strew his way. Why? What hath the Lord done? What makes this rage and spite? He made the lame to run. He gave the blind their sight. Sweet injuries. Yet they themselves displease and against him they rise. Yeah, I can see the confusion. A wonderful tune there by John Ireland, great uh, English composer. In fact, there's a wonderful elegy by Ireland, a really wonderful elegy, which comes from um, a suite composed for a um, brass band. Well, I might play that later, actually. It's stunning. Really, if you don't know that, it's... I will play that later. I will play that, yes. Okay, let's have a go with our next request, because that's what you're here for, after all. Where are we going to go? Let's go into a request that's coming from Gregory Wanders. Gregory, I saw Gregory ask, what's that thing behind my name on the screen? Gregory, it's, it's, a, it's a medal. It basically means that you've been a channel member for, what is it? Is it two years now, when you get a, when you get a three? I can't remember. I put it onto my Facebook, actually, recently. So the numbers uh, and medals mean different things. When you first join, you start with a one. And after a month, it's two. Then three months, it's three. It goes all the way up to, I think, what number does it go up to? I'm not sure. Five. Is it up to five? No, I think it goes up to six or seven. And then you get a medal. So bronze is a three. And then you get a silver, which is a two. And then a gold, which is a one. So people who have been a channel member for a very long time, Sort of the long-term listeners, the heritage listeners, if you like, get a gold medal. So the longer you're a channel member, the more sort of significant your number is, your emblem is after that. So you have to work up to it. You have to bow down to people who have the um, um, <laughs> medals. And the per first person to get a gold, I know who the first person to get a gold is, actually. I know who it will be. I know, who's the, I know exactly who has been the, the member of... Uh, channel member for the longest so yeah there's a, there's a couple of people who will get gold on the same day that'll be a moment okay let's go into uh, where, where we're going to Groby Wonder says asked for they're in God's garden which is in the ELW number 342 in here there we go, 342 There in God's garden stands the tree of wisdom, whose leaves hold forth the healing of the nations. Tree of all knowledge, tree of all compassion, tree of all beauty and sound. I mean, a tree of all beauty. I'll give you four verses, if that's okay, Gregory, because I need to, we need to keep moving. And you know me, I, I waffle, even though I promise I won't waffle, I waffle and then I waffle some more, and I waffle about... Uh, about waffling. Oh, the camera's moved. Yes, well, you know why it's moved. I've, I've told them why. It's yeah, probably in Oxford somewhere, the tripod. Um, but by the way, I've bought a new one, which should be here tomorrow. Jolly good. And then you can have one that lives here and one that lives But you know what will happen? It's like, it, it'll arrive and it'll turn up somewhere. It'll be under the chair. It'll be somewhere. Oh, but mind. we had a bit of a palaver trying to find it. it. <laughs> yeah. A good laugh. Uh, I yeah. got the blame. I got the blame. I got the blame. Well, what, what, what can I say? Didn't, we didn't find it. No one managed to find it. We looked everywhere. Last time, I was, last time it was used was in Prague. And, you know, I've been to Prague since I last saw you <laughs> to do a concert there. Um, but I, I, I don't know whether I took it to Oxford or not, but I, anyway, I didn't use it in Oxford. Is it down the back of the organ? Probably. Is it in the swell? I need to play this, this, this um, hymn for, for Gregory.
Well, as Eleanor has just said, it's a very pretty tune, and I didn't tell you what the tune was. The words are, there in God's garden stands the tree of wisdom. Um, but the tune is called Shades Mountain. S-H-A-D-E-S, -E Shades Mountain. And it's by uh, K. Lee Scott. K. That's it, maybe Kieran. Lee, L-E-E, -E, Scott, not Kaylee. <laughs> Kaylee is something very different. K. Lee Scott. And it is a very nice tune indeed. Thank you very much, Gregory, for bringing it to our attention. What wondrous love is this? Which has been requested by a very generous Katrina Clinton, who's sent me $50 through. So thank you very much, uh, Hilary. That's very kind. Let's go into the, back into the ELW for all the sixes. 666. Six, six. Ooh, that must be a cursed number. What's one? I'm surprised I didn't miss it out, actually. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? The tune here is called Wondrous Love. And this is a, this is a, more of a sort of like a um, dignified, powerful, solemn hymn, I feel. Like a reflective sort of spiritual. How do I play this? Yeah, okay, let's let's create a warm sound. So the the foundations I'm gonna go for, including that on the solo. The choir as well. So that's should be quite a you know wide warm sound coming your way very shortly. <laughs>
<laughs> Keep looking up there. And there we go, um, Katrina. I hope that was solemn enough for you. I, f I feel like that's the way that hymn would be sung. I feel like it's, you know, I, what, I can't quite find the word that I'm trying to find to describe how I visualise that hymn. Sort of slow and dignified, I guess, but there's solemn, poignant, reflective, all of those things. Perhaps you play differently. I'm always open to suggestions. Trina, thank you. <laughs> okay, right. No, I think John, I, I can see 150 thumbs up actually. So actually, we are, we are, we're floating around 300 people watching. So if you haven't clicked the like button, that actually really helps, really helps. If, if we do a virtual church, and let's just imagine that we have 7,000 views after a few days, and nobody clicks the like button. Just imagine that, so it's zero likes. YouTube will look at that and think, hmm, why hasn't no one clicked the like button? It's obviously not a very engaging and a very positive video. So YouTube likes positive videos. It sort of promotes positive videos. But if, it, if we get 7,000 views and 1,000 likes, YouTube will then think, yeah, this is, a, this is a hymn worth promoting to other people because clearly the people who've watched it have liked it enough to click the like button. So what basically results is more people get to see it. More people get to see it just might get one or two more subscribers and we build the community up so that's why i ask you to click the like button it's also ask, it's also why i ask you to leave a comment because comments are really good as well youtube likes comments youtube likes engagement so people who watch my virtual churches on my recitals and don't leave a comment you're very naughty i could name names i could name names but i won't because you're very busy i know you're very busy but even just like just a comment saying, enjoyed it, thank you very much, thumbs up emoji, it might take you three seconds to write that. But for me, it makes a world of difference. If you all did that, I'll tell you what, I'm going to... So my recital last night, which has taken me all week, all week to do, you know, it's taken me away from my family, um, it has had over 4,000 views, which I is good. And it's had 16 comments. 16 of you have left me a comment in the video to say thank you. I'd like you, a bit more of you to sort of say thank you. I'm not having a go. <laughs> but just be, please just sort of, it helps. It really helps. It, you know, it does. I'll say no more. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's now go on to our next request, which comes in from... Flawless bus. Another, another um, username to do with automotive stuff. Flawless bus ninety five makes me turn to NEH um, three hundred and thirty two. All hail the power of Jesus name to the tune Miles Lane. I'm going to have a look at this. Uh, actually, hang on. I've actually I bought something today for you. I wonder whether it's arrived yet. I don't know whether it has. I don't think I would have got a notification. That... Ooh, it's arrived. Woohoo! It's a new. Um, Book of Rehams. A Miles Lane is in it. Yes! Page 63. Number 63. Page. Must be page 63. The page 63. Well, number. Yeah, of course. Number. Wait, let's have a listen. Let's have a look. Why are there two? There's two. 
Ooh, how naughty. Right, let's have a go. Uh, at, at this, Miles Lane, all glory, sorry, all hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. And this reharmonization is by um, Paul Walton, who is one of the organists at Bristol Cathedral. Let's have a go at this one, shall we? That's some outrageous chords there. Blimey, blimey, blimey. I think I'll play that one. Okay, are you ready? You have to hold on to your hat, as they say. <laughs> That was the more civilised version because there's another version which goes to listen like this. Quite out there, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder whether they're all that outrageous. 
I'd have to have some more of those to see what they're like. Anyway, let's have a go on to our next one. Uh, so thank you very much, Flawless Bus, for your two quid and for requesting Miles Lane. That was fun. Okay, Bill Ratey is up next, our esteemed uh, current uh, time stamper who's working very hard with all that sort of stuff. I'm sorry for looking over here. That's very bad. I, my list of things to play is all the way over there, and the camera's over there. That's bad planning, isn't it? Um, but Bill has apparently emailed an intro interlude and last verse reharm. Oh, right. Excellent. Well, let's have a look. Bill. The love of God is greater far. Well, that's different to the hymn that is on the thing that I've got to play. Uh, why, why is that too? Doing so well. Confused now. Oh, where? What's going on? Where, Bill, 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 where are you, my friend? Ash, no, not that one. Oh, here it is. Ah, here it is. Oh, yeah, so that's the interlude, Descant. Okay. And I... Okay, so I need to find the tune Hamburg. Where do I find that? Um, no, no, just... no, no. Oh, I think Nala's... No. Nabbing the chicken, by the sounds of it. Sorry, guys, this is. I need to have got this sort of thing sorted out earlier. Um, Hamburg, when I survey, let's have a look in here. When I survey, glory died. The wrong tune, isn't it? <laughs> when I survey, uh, 803. 803. And I survey the wonders. There it is. Right, so what have I got to do here? I don't know what I've got to do. Yes, can. Okay. Easy. I can manage that. I can manage that. I'm a big boy. So, pop that over there like that. Pop that there like that. Make it a buzzer. Go along.
Right, well, uh, who did that then? So Hal H. Opson apparently uh, put that together. So it was um, basically based around the hymn, When I Surveyed the Wondrous Cross, the tune Hamburg. Whatever. <laughs> um, but as requested by Bill. So thank you very much, uh, Bill. Sending that through, like your mashups, they're interesting and they keep it, keep me on my toes as well. Which is never a bad thing, it wakes me up a little bit. Okay, let's have a few more and then we might have to call it a night fairly soon. So we've got, how many have we got here? We've got Glenn Snyder coming up, we've got um, Jim Forsyth coming up, Sean Pierce coming up, Michelle coming up. So, Glenn, let's have a look at yours. So you sent it to me via email, did you? Email. Emergency mail. Uh, did you, did you, what, did you really? Uh, okay. And then, uh, let's have a quick look. So the last email I received from Glenn Snyder was in 2022, apparently. I can't be right. Uh, so where is it? Email is from me. Oh, it's... Have thine own way, Lord. Oh, there it is. Right, yes, it is. It's from... There it is. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mould me and make me after thy will. Oops. While I am waiting, yielded and still. I can't actually quite see what the tune's called because it's a bit fuzzy. I, I think it's... I can't see. It begins with an A and it's got an E in the middle. I think it ends with... I don't know. It's just a big blur. Somebody let me know what the tune is called so we can actually um, keep it logged. Okay, so thank you very much, Glenn. Sorry about the time it's taken to get this sorted. Uh, uh, so yeah, have thine own way, Lord.
and Bobby. That was the um, clarinet just for you there in the final verse. I saw your comment. Willis is the only one who ever made a clarinet I actually like and would use. It's a beautiful clarinet, isn't it? They're often nicer, I find, lower down in the sort of the tenor register. I mean, they're, they're beautiful up here, aren't they, as well? And then down in the bass. Interesting. Gorgeous. Okay, so thank you very much, people, for your generosity tonight and for, oh, for just being here as part of the club. It's great to have you. Oh, we've lost three. We've lost three ice cubes. Who was that? Was that Ian? Are you, are you put, um, putting my ice cubes on the floor? Chocolate brownies in the oven. Oh, that sounds promising. <laughs> have you told them we have a, a birthday in the house tomorrow? We do have a very special birthday in the house tomorrow. Uh, it's our little boy's third birthday. Third birthday already. Three, yeah, little man's three tomorrow. So we he's going to nursery. <laughs> he's going to take brownies to nursery. Have a party at nursery. And um, Bill, yes, three. Oh, I, I, it's, it's, it's amazing. It doesn't seem two minutes since he was in the sling here. In your tight, smaller than Charlotte is now. And I was playing the organ on the old Viscount as well. Amazing how quickly he's grown up. And Charlotte as well. Charlotte's growing up really quickly. But they're both, both gorgeous. Yeah, those of you on Patreon will have seen Charlotte playing a pedal solo. Oh, yeah. There's something about crawling babies and a pedal board. It's just so enticing. So you... Honestly, not many crawling babies have a chance to crawl across a pedal board. But our two have, and they both embraced the... She was doing it today, actually. She, oh, was, she, was. she was crawling over today. <laughs> Which... It's rather funny because Hugo was playing. He likes the pedal notes, unsurprisingly. So what he likes me to do is put a pe push a pedal note down, and he he stands on the um, bench. He literally stands on the bench here, and he knows which one to go for. Doesn't go for this one. No, 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 no. Doesn't go for this one. Or that one. Or that one. Or that one. Doesn't go for any of those, no. Which one does he go for? And then he pushes it in. Then he pulls it out again. And then he laughs. And he goes for that one. And back to that one. <laughs> he's a little he's a little he's a tyrant. <laughs> Right, let's have a go then with um, It Is A Thing Most Wonderful, Almost Too Wonderful To Be. Uh, requested by Jim Forsyth, 6,000, uh, and to the tune Herongate.
Okay, and then we have, I think, I think we just have one more hint to come your way, and it's coming from Michelle. Michelle is very interested, I gather, in acoustics, acoustic engineering. So, Michelle, you would have had a good time with me in Oxford, uh, recording at the uh, Cathedral of Christchurch. Uh, and actually, Michelle, a good opportunity for you to go and watch that video and let me know what you think about the acoustic and how, how well you think or not I've captured the acoustic. Particularly, I think, in, in the middle section of the, um, the bark, Passacaglia. Bobby bit. Not Bobby bit. That bit. Um, I'll let you into a little secret. I actually, so I had the microphones really close to the pipes. Um, with the certainly with the choir division, um, positive, which you know, sits behind the player, the, the rook positive. I had the microphones really close, maybe literally that far away. What's that? I don't know. Two feet away from the pipes. I also had more in the building all over. Uh, but for that one moment, which is just one uh, one choir flute, eight foot flute, and then it goes up to the to the grate. For that moment, I had the mix because I'm always changing the mix throughout the piece. For that at that particular moment, I had the the, the close microphones uh, almost on full. Well, not full, because it would have been too loud. So it's really, really clear, really, really close. And the, the only other microphones at that point I had on were the ones very, very far away. So they had nothing in between. So no sort of like, no sweet spot microphones or, you know. So if you had the, the rear ones on by themselves, it would sound like you were in a different room. Or basically, it's just acoustic. There's no clarity at all, it's just ambience. So I had very, very clear microphones, like very clear, like in your face clear. And then just underneath that, sort of washing around it, I had the rear, uh, the ambience on. Um, and I think it works really well for um, when you're using sort of, you know, single flute stops. works really well. Have a listen to that moment in the Pastor Collier, let me know what you think. Okay, so let's now let's go into your request, which is, um, it's the tune Coronation, it's, and it, it, the text is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, again, but it's to a different tune, number 634 in here. Pick what is it, 634? Yeah. Roger whatever, they sounded great. <laughs> well, I know. I know a lot of people don't really, they, yeah, they don't really care about where microphones are as long as it sounds great. But I know a lot of people are really interested. There's so much thought in that. from your point of view goes into it, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I haven't got a microphone, by the way, so people probably can't hear what I'm saying. Well, that's, which is a real shame because I have a lot of things to say. And don't it's all we, very don't insightful. We, don't we and know all it? Very relevant. Very relevant. Yeah. <laughs> highly, highly irrelevant. I mean, relevant. Yes. Right. All hail the power of Jesus' name to the tune Coronation, requested by Michelle.
Thank you very much, Michelle, for, for sending that one through. And also for your $20, it's very generous. And YouTube tells me that it was your first super chat. So thank you for it being here. Just before we, I forgot to ask, is anyone uh, joining us tonight for the first time? If anyone is, I'll give you a special shout out. And just to remind you that this will be on sale, hopefully tomorrow. Um, and if you'd like me to sign it, I will sign it for you. If you don't want me to sign it, it's absolutely fine. I won't. <laughs> no, don't scratch that, Bob. That's the VIP seat. No, it's not the VIC seat. It's a very important person seat. Okay, stop it. Stop it. So, yes, if you want to order this, and the first batch, you know, I will get them signed for you. And leave me a, a, a note on the email if you want me to sign it, and I will write you a personalised Hello, message. Hello, Spencer Crosser, first time live. And Mark Richter, first time here from Frisco, Texas, USA. Yeah, both welcome, both very welcome. Looks like Mark's playing a flute in his picture. It looks like Spencer's riding a dinosaur. <laughs> Can't quite see all those. All the best and Michelle looks like she's just been to yoga. All the best people Sh play the flute. Sean looks like he's uh, flying an airplane. Bobby looks like uh, a donkey that's lost all its hair. A poor sign. Um, okay. Richard. It looks like it's a, a, an old Kawai Cole. JT's picture looks very smart, so it's only a DJ. It's Bill's funny. picture looks like um, uh, someone wearing a, what do you call that, a flat cap and glasses and being very jolly and waving like that. Josh is a, just a very handsome devil. <laughs> Ian Garden's picture, I'm sorry to say, it looks like the McDonald's sign. <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel looks like it's playing a humongous organ. <laughs> that's the that's the Wanamaker, isn't it, Daniel? Uh, I think Daniel will confirm. I think JT says. <laughs> Look, I think you very smart. Daniel Kibaki is you playing the Wanamaker, isn't it? Am oh, right? Doug's posing next to an organ. I think. I can't quite see. Uh, that's uh, they're so small on the screen. <laughs> I think they might be bigger for you. You probably can see better clearer than I can. Oh, it's a baby wombat. It's not four sign. There you go, look, Daniel Kabaki, yes, that is the console of the Wanamaker. There you go. What am I, what, what am I holding this for? Uh, so, uh, where are we up to? Oh, so Sean Pierce actually has requested an, an organ piece, so we'll play that, it's quite a, a jolly little ditty. Can you just pass me, um, uh, whatever it's called? The, the um, no, keep going down the pile. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That, that, that one. Oh, no, the, no, 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 the next one down, yeah. Central organist. The central organist. Yeah. Robert Solaski just said hello. And good chappy said he's off to bed shortly. Oh, good chappy, I hope, <laughs> I hope I am as well. I think I feel like I'm already in bed. And you've got some gift wrapping to do, Richard. Oh, yeah. I can't go to bed yet. <laughs> um, I need to play Sheep May Safely Graze for oh, Sean. Nice. I'll play a bit of this. Where is it? I'll play a bit of it. Sheep May Safely Spencer Graze. Spencer is 130 from Ohio. Eight. We have a few listeners from Ohio. We do. It's nice to have you along, Spencer. Welcome. Very friendly community virtual congregation here at PC. On the whole? You will find very chatty. Right, let me just get some stops ready on this, for this, for Sean. And after this, I'll play a ditty from here. Thank you very much, Mark, for your $20. Let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. Well, thank you very much, Mark. I will celebrate that. It means a lot. Thank you very much. And it's um, it's all thanks to the community, i.e. you, that this is even possible. Uh, this organ is possible thanks to you. Doing things like this is possible thanks to you. Um, and I might, no, I'll say I've got, some, I've got some news, but it's so new that I can't give you the news. Because I need to sort of just, yeah, you know, do things with that piece of news first before I tell you about it. But it's news, very exciting news. Um, ah, Robertson, thank you very much, Robert, for your hundred dollars. That's so kind. Thank you so much. Um, yes. So th these will be sent out very soon. 
okay? So get your orders in tomorrow, or whenever it will be. It's okay. a beautiful book, isn't it? Stunning. I'm really happy with it, yeah. Ian, yes, your, I'm afraid your picture looks like the McDonald's sign, doesn't it, from a distance? <laughs> I can't uh, see anything. I know, I, I, I I know it's like eating a, sil so. a silver man organ, but... Um, <laughs> anyway, people are tuning off. Let, let's um, play be, um, sheep may safely um, eat their grass. Okay, that's... Uh, I don't need to go... Let's have that, shall we? All right, so it's for Sean Pierce, um, Sheep May Safely Graze by Bach, um, and it's, I forget what cantata this is actually from now, uh, what it's called, someone will put it in the chat, some learned member of our chat will put it in to the chat, uh, but it's been arranged here by um, our dear friend Noel Rawsthorne.
here. That was Noel Rawson's arrangement of the um, sheep may safely graze. Okay, I'm going to just play one ditty from this book, and it's by a young chap who has appeared on Beauty and Sound a few times now. Um, a very, um, I think, a talented composer, actually, and, the, and a good organist as well. Very nice, very good organist who played here last year. And he goes by the name of Adam Heron. So he's um, composed a few things for BIS, including this fantasy in the E minor. It's a wonderful piece, and I think something that would is very suited to a pre-service voluntary. And it's um, a crescendo towards the end before dying back down to a quiet sort of um, a quiet registration. So he wants a clarinet, and he wants some eight-foot tone as well. This organ has that in abundance. Let's engage eight foot tone now. Um, just like this. Okay, so this is Adam Heron's Fantasy in E minor, and this can be yours when you when you order it. Okay, and let's have a go.
as Margaret has just said, a lovely piece of music. Bill Rachel said, magic. And Brendan says, whoa, beautiful. It is beautiful. It's a beautiful piece. Um, and I, I suspect it will be entering a lot of organists' repertoire. The piece after that is a little chorale prelude on Amazing Grace. And the piece before it are some reflections on St. Dino, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. If you haven't heard that before, I haven't, I haven't played that online, but it's full of wonderful stuff, this book. So look out for that. Thank you all so much for tonight. Sorry that um, I, I didn't manage to get through any pre-requests, but actually the quality, of, uh, the quality of live requests, i.e. all of the um, super chats tonight have been very high. So thank you very much for sending through such quality live requests. And thank you to everyone who has um, sponsored and donated. It's all going, still, still going towards Music Room. We need to give you an update, but just the question is, well, there's a lot of questions around it, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Basically, how to fund it. Where's, where's the money coming from? Because that BIS doesn't have enough money to fund it. That's the, the problem. So it's basically going to have to be, yeah. <laughs> it's going to come from somewhere. But as, as, we can, as if we can get as much capital as possible behind us to put up front, if we get a loan, then the less we need to borrow and you know, less we need to pay an in interest, all of that sort of stuff. If anyone has you know two hundred thousand pound knocking around that they want to lend me, <laughs> interest free, please get in touch. Okay, thank you all so much. On a more serious note, uh, and please look out for you know this and enjoy Holy Week. One of the most poignant um, seasons in the church calendar. Holy week already. And then Easter. Easter next weekend. I can't believe it. This is Easter next weekend. And we'll have an uplifting virtual church next Sunday with live requests again and all of the Easter hits. Does, it, does somebody want to do a top five Easter hymns? Perhaps. Would be cool. Could we, could, we could turn into a bit of a competition, actually. So I'll, I'll have a think. So until then, I will say good night, a cheerio, and you guys have got to stay safe, as always. You've got to stay safe. Until, until next time, goodbye. <laughs>